You know, a man has got to know his limitations. If you don't know what that was, that was a cultural reference. Look at Magnum Force, famous line out. That was kind of Clint Eastwood's tagline in that movie. Um, man's got to know his limitations. Apparently, I don't know mine. Um, even though I try to learn it every single time I come out here, it seems like. I don't know. I can't seem to figure out my limitations. And here's my current limitations. See, I tried to, I tried to cast this play button. And uh, it didn't work. And this is this is how it looks, which is not bad. It's not horrible. Uh, it's upside down. That's the way it's supposed to be. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, it didn't go. So we're going to um, we're going to sh we're going to. I'll show you the casting. I'll show you the process, and I'll show you what went wrong during that thing. Uh, you can figure out maybe, and maybe someone out there knows what. I'm doing wrong and what I can do to make this better. And the other thing is I want to mention, I just want to bring this up. There's kind of like, the, you know, the elephant in the room thing. People have been making fun of my sweatshirts. <laughs> They're like, can't you afford a new sweatshirt that's not like all torn up? And you're like, what are you doing with those things? You pouring acid? <laughs> it hurts. It really hurts. <laughs> Let's get to the casting. So this is my 3D print of uh, my, you know, the a play button. <laughs> the play button. Anyway, uh, I've had nothing but trouble with these things. I have another print that I'm trying to do for my wife. And man, I just cannot get the sand to release from like these areas and this area. It just refuses. So we're going to try once again. I'm going to... We're going to hope that this works. Um, I actually had it the other day, I think. And when I did it, I managed to pick this up without a board underneath it. And this thing fell out and broke this part off. I was like, oh. So we're going to put it on a board. I can lift the whole thing up, turn it over, um, and go like that. Now, I made one of these. It's making a mess everywhere it goes. It's a sand, it's a sand, it's a sock full of that, baby powder, cornstarch. Yeah, cornstarch, pure cornstarch, it says. Because all the cool kids have something like this. So, look at all that stuff. I'm going to do this. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking seriously about just leaving it, just like that when I uh, do this sand. So let's go ahead and uh, get this stuff on here. You can't grate it on. All right, we got sand in there. I haven't done any ramming yet. Now, <laughs> Martin, over at, uh, you know, old foundry man Martin, he, uh, he told me, he said, quit being such a, I think he said, he called it like a, a, a hui hui wulawamba, which I think is, is Australian for wimp <laughs> when it comes to uh, packing this stuff. So I'm going to pack like Martin suggested. I'm going to get it right over the top of my pattern, which is right there. And we're just going to ram the snot out of this stuff. Don't ask. All right, let me finish uh, filling this thing up and we'll flip her over. All righty. Get this thing out of the way right now. Put more sand on everything when I do that. I'm going to slide it over to the edge because my board is, notice my board's a little too big. Let's see if we can't, uh, I'm going to flip this thing end over. I don't know, I'm going to do it this way. cope on here. 
I'm going to parting dust. I kind of like this. I should have done this a long time ago. Oh, that's a lot. We need a feeder, riser, riser feeder thing. I'm going to put that right there. My sprue. You know, I borrowed this from my wife weeks and weeks ago. And she hasn't got it back yet. <laughs> it's a good thing she's good to me. Because if she were like me, she'd be like, where's my baster? But she's not. She's nice. She's much nicer than I am. All right, so let's see. Yeah, this is going to go right about here. I'm going to go ahead and put some sand in here just to hold it up. I'll go here. And the idea is going to be I'll do my fill basin over here. We'll fill into the sprue. Run across, gate in, end gate, end gate. You know, I've seen that word. I've heard people say it, and I've never done it myself. So I suppose end gate implies there's an out gate. Okay, I got the. Uh, I got the pieces in. Let's get these things pulled and we'll finish scraping the top. All right, there's a feeder. There's a sprue. See these guys doing this? All right, scraping like halfway. I guess that keeps it from falling in the hole. Except when you do that. <laughs> Okay, now, where's my universal cutting tool here? No loose sand. Go away, loose sand. Yeah, do that later. Okay, so fill basin is supposed to be, I guess, square side, well not square sided, but at least the sides are supposed to be 90 degrees down, right, it, perpendicular to the, the top surface. Um, I don't guess it has to be square in shape, but we want to go down, straight down with a flat bottom in it. So that it would, from what I understand, just to keep the, the metal from splashing as much, maybe coming back out or racing over the top of the um, the ridge we're going to put in here. I'm going to make it just a little bit bigger because my aim is horrible. Okay. So now we've got a basin that is pretty Pretty straight sided here. Now the hard part for this is cutting this ridge. The ridge as I learned on a pour that you never saw, the ridge has got to be lower than this surface. Otherwise the metal just fills up here and runs all over the back of your mold. So <laughs> that's gotta be First, first thing we had to worry about. All right, and then it's supposed to be just a nice, gradual sort of pour over, not a boom like a you know waterfall, but sort of just a, a nice, gentle um, slope into the into the sprue, and it should be smooth going in there, not any. No corners for it to have to go around or like that. The idea is, I think, I think the idea is to reduce turbulence. Uh, well, maybe a couple things. Reduce turbulence so you don't get a bunch of 
air coming down, and I, and I guess that's the second thing. You don't get a bunch of air getting sucked down. You fill it up here, and it runs over, and maybe that control actually helps the um, helps with the amount of air that gets sucked down into the mold. I don't know. I don't quite understand the science of it. I mean, I can sort of see this thing. I can see sort of see this is this like a good idea. Um, Certainly, it seems better than just pouring straight down into the pattern, uh, which, you know, I know a lot of guys do, and they get away with it, and it looks fine. Um, but just the idea of pouring right down into my mold, my mold, not my pattern, um, it just seems like not, not a great thing to do in terms of keeping uh, the integrity of the pattern, the integrity of the mold. All right this cleaned off so as much parting dust as I put on there <laughs> this thing should leap off of here <laughs> uh, let's see oh man came off so easy look at all that it's all white too wonder why okay so let's uh, where'd my tool go there it is all right, we're going to, like I've done in the past, we're going to come across the sprue with a runner. So the sprue is right here. Gate or the feeder is right here. Riser, if you want to call it a riser. Um, and we're going to come right across the bottom of all of that. And I'm not going to be too shy about the size of this thing because I don't want it, as always, I don't want it freezing up. I don't want any part of this feeding system to freeze up. So we're going to make it reasonably good size as it's running across. And there's no, there's no basin at the bottom here that's just going to come down. 90 degrees across to the um, to the gate or to the feeder. Now, the feeder is coming in, not from there, it's coming in here. So we're going to cut that into the cope. Like so. Again, I'm being pretty liberal with the size of this thing. It's uh, I realize it's a bigger thing to cut off but again I don't want it to freeze so we're gonna we're just gonna make this thing pretty good size here. <sighs> Say a quick prayer guys because we're gonna pull this thing out for the 20 millionth time I'm afraid to look. This is why I'm always afraid to look. I don't get it. I guess a man's got to know. A man's got to know his limitations, I suppose. And my limitation is you can't cast anything smaller than than this. <laughs> I guess I don't know. Tell you what we're gonna do because I am sick and tired of this thing. I am going to just. Take this off and take these guys off. And I think we're going to end up with a play button that we can all be proud of. It just doesn't have my logo or a thousand on it.
So there it is. I'm going to, I'm not sure what happened there. I must have hit it. I am going to put a little more of this stuff on there just to fill in. I'll blow it off. I'll blow it off too. What do you say? Shall we cast her? Let's cast it. See what it looks like. Looks clean. It's melted some metal. Man, I came seconds away from pouring this thing and not having my camera turned on. <laughs> Pour it into the fill basin. Over the top into the riser. Keep it going, keep it going. All right. I think that worked like it was supposed to. I think. <laughs> we'll know when we take it apart. Hopefully it's nice and clean. Hopefully it's nice and clean. We'll be back when it's cool. All right, let's, uh, it's cooled, I think. It's cold. It's hard anyway. <laughs> let's uh, let's see what we got. Always so exciting, isn't it? <laughs> Man, that is perfect. <laughs> of course, if I look at the bottom, I haven't looked at the bottom yet. None of us have seen the <laughs> seen what it really looks like. Now the question is, how does this thing look? Let's take a look together. Not bad. Not bad. It's got a lot of oil on it. Um, but I'll be sanding that off. There we go. Actually, I guess it should go this way, shouldn't it? Look like a play button to you? Let me get it cleaned up and we'll, uh, we'll show it off. All right, so here it is. I want to show it to you a little bit closer here. Um, you can see the, the logo right up right up there, and then the 1,000 is down here. It still showed up in the print. Um, the face of it's not too shabby. It looked, I think the casting itself went pretty well. Um, but obviously, we got things to learn there, um, things to learn. So this I'm pretty thrilled about. This, I think, turned out spectacular. <laughs> And I'm, I'm actually serious about that. I, this is so cool to me. Fill basin, ridge, rounded ridge, very nice and smooth, rounded. Into the sprue, across the runner, across the bottom. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> runner across the bottom, gate coming out of the top. This is pretty cool, and I'm really excited about this because this is kind of, a big part of what I'm trying to learn with this casting um, is how to get a good pour and how to make sure that my parts are going to be filled and um, you know not full of air or not full of voids like my very first my hammer video that you saw um, had that void in there and I'm trying to avoid that in future in future ones so I'm pretty happy with this and I think this is looking almost perfect uh, as far as that's concerned <laughs> anyway, I will, uh, I'll tell you what I'll do. I will link the, uh, the hammer video with it had the hole on it here. And then I will link a hammer video that didn't have a hole on it here. And over here, we'll do the subscribe button. If you want to subscribe, click the button. Uh, if you're already subscribed and you want to be notified when I put a new video out, click that bell that you see. That's what it takes. All right. You guys have a great day.